Since the early 90s, Harold Ramis' Groundhog Day has been viewed as an essential feature in many households across the country. Between the comforting aesthetic of small-town Punxsutawney and the endless charm of Phil Connors' journey from jaded weatherman to thoughtful everyman, this movie has stood the test of time from decade to decade and shown us that it is never too late to improve who you are. You know, I think this is one of the traits of a really good producer keep the talent happy. Groundhog Day is the story of Phil Connors, played here by Bill Murray, a selfish and arrogant weatherman with dreams of climbing the career ladder and never looking back. When Phil gets sent to the humble small town of Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania to cover the town's big Groundhog Day event, he finds himself lost in a time loop where he must relive the same day over and over again until he can figure out how to escape the loop and move on with his life. Along the way, Phil will face everything from minor annoyances like Ned the Head, an old acquaintance of Phil's and a pushy insurance salesman, to more damning experiences like love, loss, rebellion, existentialism, heroism, and even death itself. He might be okay. The film was directed by the late Harold Ramis, who also wrote the film along with Danny Rubin and of course stars the comedy legend Bill Murray, as well as Andy McDowell and Chris Elliott in supporting roles. This movie stands as a charming and heartwarming tale that has since been analyzed, dissected, deconstructed, and flat out pontificated on. With themes of grief, depression, nihilism, and the overall human experience, there is plenty to sink our teeth into when it comes to our annual revisiting of this iconic movie. Well, it's beginning to grow on me. But for all the theories online about the true message of the film, there's a shocking amount of information that can be drawn from the story. Rita, I'm reliving the same day over and over. I'm Kier with Joe Blow Originals, and today we're going to break down Groundhog Day and figure out once and for all, what's it really about? Now, what do we know about Groundhog Day? It's been rumored to be an allegory for things like purgatory, which is evident by Phil's inability to escape the loop no matter what he tries or how hard he tries it. Didn't we do this yesterday? I don't know what you mean. No! Ah! Don't mess with me, pork chop. <sighs> In Ramus' personal life, he was raised Jewish by his parents, and later in life found wisdom in the Buddhism religion, which states that after death, it takes about 10,000 years to evolve to the next step in your afterlife. This speaks to the ongoing debate of just how long Phil was stuck in the time loop. While some believe it couldn't have been more than a year, to some folks making entire videos swearing that it's more like 10 or 15 years, and even Harold Ramus himself saying at one point that Phil could have been lost in time for up to 80 years. Well, my mother in law lived for 35 years in a Zen Buddhist meditation center uh, to the end of her life. And she, I called her right away on the weekend and she said, they saw it. They, the abbots and the senior monks, she said they loved it. You know, they, they thought it ex expresses a fundamental Buddhist concept. And then I heard from people in the yoga community that it was everything that they were about. And then I started getting letters from the from the Christian uh, from Catholic priests and Christian and Baptist ministers saying this totally expresses our philosophy. You must be Christians, obviously, because uh, it's such a Christian, devoutly Christian movie. And then the psychiatric community uh, chimed in and said, obviously, the movie is a metaphor for psychoanalysis uh, because the, we re revisit the same stories over and over. We keep reliving these same patterns in our life and. The whole goal of psychoanalysis to, is to break those pattern behaviors. Of course, there is no definitive answer to this question, but Danny Rubin did speak on this in a 2005 interview, stating, It became this weird political issue because if you asked the studio how long was the repetition, they'd say two weeks. But the point of the movie to me was that you had to feel you were enduring something that was going on for a long time. For me, it had to be, I don't know, a hundred years, a lifetime. Regardless of what theory you subscribe to, I can definitely say that it does, in fact, feel like a long time. Do you ever have deja vu, Mrs. Lancaster? I don't think so, but I could check with the kitchen. Phil spends the first few days in the loop trying to figure out exactly what's going on, then begins abusing his newfound power for a while before eventually becoming depressed and bored with his endless cycle of consequence-free living. 
I've sort of always looked at Phil's process through the movie as a loose metaphor for the stages of grieving, with Phil first being in denial of the situation, and over time becoming angry that he can't escape town, as proven by Phil's disassociation with the locals and greater community, then reaches bargaining by seeing a doctor and a therapist in order to help him gain passage through the loop, only to end up in depression by multiple attempts to kill himself. I have been stabbed, shot, poisoned, frozen, hung, electrocuted, and burned. But finally, acceptance, where Phil embraces his situation and uses his endless time to improve the lives of everybody in town. Now, just like all movies, it's art. It's subjective, and everything we speak about is nothing more than the theories of a madman who is obsessed with movies. It's like I said, I love this film. I've seen it over a hundred times. But I really believe that grief is a main message to be taken away from this story. Phil experiences loss in many ways through his time in Punxsutawney, as he befriends and later loses a homeless man to natural causes, proving that even with his so-called God status, he can't save everyone. Sometimes people just die. But Phil's grief is more than literal death. He also suffers the loss of his dreams, as because he's stuck in time, he can no longer move on and achieve anything beyond a few good deeds around town. He's forced to sit with all the small anxieties that come with reliving the worst day of your life hundreds, if not thousands of times with no escape in sight. But how does this gel with the real lives of the filmmakers? Well, Ramis and Ruben have stated that none of the movie's deeper themes were intentional. But does that mean that those themes aren't there? Well, of course they are. When I first designed the original screenplay, it was almost like an experiment. My background was in the sciences, and so I kind of think that way. And it, I wanted to plunk somebody down, this character, in this situation, and kind of watch it play out and see how it developed. And what I thought was interesting was just the process of repetition caused him to go through these big changes in the way he looked at his life. And that included his coming around to um, losing his ego and starting to notice other people and trying to join civilization instead of um, prove himself to it or something like that. Bill Murray stated that when he read the script, he took the story as being about the fear of change and how being stuck in a time loop represents the complacency of day-to-day -day life. What I find interesting is that the locals in Punxsutawney seem to relate to Phil despite not being aware of the time loop. In an important scene where Phil is having some beers with two bowlers and hanging out at the bowling alley, he talks about the drag of living the same day over and over without being able to experience anything new, and the two men seem to resonate with this idea. Now that sums it up for me. This shows that even outside of the loop, regular folks feel the mundane lifestyle of their tiny town weighing on them. That, to me, is the movie's window, a clear moment where Phil Connors can talk directly to the audience, which, by extension, also means it's Ramis and Ruben's chance to talk directly to the audience as well. They're telling us in this one scene that this story is meant to represent us, but are we meant to relate to the story or to Phil Connors? Let me ask you a question and answer it honestly. Is Phil Connors God? I'm a God. I'm not the guy. This is another popular theory. Phil Connors could be interpreted as any number of cultural or religious figures like Bodhisattva, a shaman-like figure who guides souls to nirvana. Some think that Phil represents the human soul and the loop as a vehicle for him to learn about his past mistakes. But even Phil himself interprets his character as a godlike being. This can be speculated on based on a line that Murray gives as Phil when he says this. I make the weather. Phil also flat out tells Rita that he's a god, but not the god. When Phil first begins to take advantage of the situation, he first uses the loop to play petty tricks on people and hook up with hot locals. It almost reminds me of the first montage in Bruce Almighty where Bruce is playing with his powers. This could be the obvious, which is that it's fun and funny to see someone live out their most juvenile of fantasies once they have the means to do so without consequence. And to that I say, yeah, maybe. 
But also, could it be that Phil's initial reaction to having power is because he already had the ego? Hear me out. Before the time loop, Phil is already an unlikable character. He's enormously self-obsessed. He's egocentric and arrogant beyond reason. From the very beginning, we're meant to see Phil as someone who sees himself as better than almost everybody. He's constantly looking down on his co-workers and sees everybody that isn't him as beneath him. In my more blasphemous moments, I take that as a commentary that power makes the cocky cockier and the superior... superior... -er. Phil always thought he was some kind of god, or at the very least, he saw himself as more special than everyone around him, even before the time loop gave him the power. He seems to come by the nasty part, quite honestly, the self-centeredness and all. And Bill Murray really does understand that character. I mean, you know... You know, he's not a movie star by accident. Uh, you know, he has, he, he understands vanity and self-centeredness. Now, Ramis was not egotistical, according to those who knew him, but Murray sure is. And there's a case to be made that Bill Murray is just that good at playing an asshole, but I think maybe there's a chance that Ruben and Ramis wrote this character to mock the ego of anybody with this false sense of self-worth. But Phil isn't a god. And despite what every other theory suggests, Phil isn't even that special in this story. He's not the chosen one. He's not really a hero. He's more a successful experiment conducted by the universe. I am really close on this one. When Steve Rogers is given the super soldier serum that transformed him into a sexy patriotic beefcake, he's only physically transformed. Steve always had a heart of gold and compassion for his fellow man. His focus was always on the greater good. Captain America is a hero. When Neo accepts his place as the one, he's able to level up and overcome his physical and mental limitations. Neo is a hero. And when John McClane rises to the occasion and saves a building full of people from a dangerous group of terrorists, he's acting out of his first instinct to protect the people he loves. McClane? is a hero and a badass. Yippee-ki-yay, motherfucker. But in the case of Phil Connors, he's never considered the greater good. Hell, he doesn't even think that there was a collective goodness to consider. He didn't go on the traditional hero's journey and learn to accept his place as some kind of leader. He doesn't seem to have anyone in his life that he cares about more than himself or at all. Phil doesn't start as a humble average Joe with greatness hoisted upon him. He doesn't need to be given the means to be great in order to think he's great. So it's almost the opposite of the hero's journey in that way. I say all of that to say that despite the belief that Groundhog Day is a metaphor for purgatory, or the Dante's Inferno angle, or even the theory that this movie serves as a religious commentary on the story of Jesus Christ, I think that the character of Phil Connors proves that this movie is actually about something else. When Phil begins to experiment more with his time, he starts leaning into his efforts to make the day he's reliving as perfect as possible for the town. Hey. Let me ask you this. You ever played Mario? You know in Super Mario Bros when you'd pass a level and whenever you got bored, you would revisit that same level and try to get through it in record time and collect every coin you could along the way? You following me? It's the idea of playing a familiar level and trying to nail it with 100% perfection. That's what Phil is essentially doing in this movie. When he feels that he's already mastered the loop and memorized all of its twists and obstacles, he starts using his memory of the day's recurring events to do small good deeds throughout town. Whether it's buying a huge insurance package from Ned, making Larry's day with a small town collaborative courtesy, or giving WrestleMania tickets to Michael Shannon. That's right, Michael Shannon. WrestleMania! No way! <laughs> Phil is looking to make the perfect day. He's playing the same level over and over and trying to nail it. Eventually, he gets so comfortable with the loop that he can easily save a kid in a tree, fix a flat tire, and even save a few lives without breaking a sweat. And throughout it all, he learns French and repeats multiple attempts to make Rita fall in love with them. And does he do this because he wants to help? Or is it a selfish act to entertain himself? We really can't know for sure. But I think the fact that Phil only breaks the loop when he lives a fully selfless day and masters the day's events proves that the universe didn't call upon Phil to fulfill his destiny, but more to learn a lesson for his bad behavior. How do you know I'm not a god? <laughs> oh, please. How do you know? 
Do you see Phil's time loop as a mission to be completed or a lesson to be learned? Was the universe really just making an example of the worst kind of man by giving him no choice but to change? Would Phil have ever learned empathy, compassion, or love without the curse of being forced to repeat the level until he got it right? And does that make Phil a hero? I don't think it does. In fact, I think what Groundhog Day is really about is the idea that it takes more than being capable of doing good. It takes the genuine desire from the individual to put their fellow community ahead of their own selfish agenda. And just maybe, this movie is really about the dangers of getting stuck in the same mental routine as well as the same physical routine. Being stuck in your own way of thinking seems to be the one flaw that Phil was least likely to fix but turned out to be the only thing that could set him free. I think you as a glass is half empty kind of guy, am I right? What do you think about Groundhog Day? And what do you think it's really about? There's endless ways that this movie can be broken down and analyzed, and we are very interested in reading your theory in the comments section. From Joe Blow Originals, I'm Kier, and that is what Groundhog Day is really about. The worst part is that tomorrow you will have forgotten all about this and you'll treat me like a jerk again.